professional wrestling has had its secrets and mysteries since the beginning, but for the last 30 years or so, quite a few urban legends have popped up, and some remain unanswered to this day. So let's talk about them. At Survivor Series in 1997, the now infamous Montreal Screwjob took place. Bret Hart was leaving for the rival WCW, and Vince McMahon didn't want Bret taking his WWF championship with him. Hart, who had a long-time feud with Shawn Michaels, didn't want to lose his title to him in his home country. Vince agreed to let Bret keep the title that night and would allow him to later forfeit the belt. Well, that's at least what he told Hart. During the match, Mr. McMahon came down to the ring and while Shawn Michaels put Bret Hart into his very own finishing move, the sharpshooter, Vince called for the ref to ring the bell, ending the match and making Shawn Michaels the new WWF champion via submission. This led to a very fiery rivalry between not only Bret Hart and Vince McMahon, but it also divided a lot of the Hart camp from the WWF, causing friends and family of Bret's to leave the company. This would go down as one of the biggest controversies the industry had ever seen, but over the years, people started to actually wonder if it was real or if it was all a work. In Shawn Michaels' autobiography, Heartbreak and Triumph, HBK mentions that the idea to perform Bret Hart's finishing move was Triple H's idea, while Bret Hart recalls Pat Patterson suggesting the spot. To make things more confusing, Vince Russo also takes credit for the idea, stating that he came up with it during a conversation with Vince McMahon. Also in Michael's book, HBK claims he informed referee Earl Hebner about the finish while in the locker room earlier that night. However, in a shoot interview with Earl, he claims Jerry Briscoe clued him into the swerve. Many fans and wrestlers have gone on record stating that they very well believe it could have been a work. Even Jerry the King Lawler, who served as ringside commentator for the match, said there's a good possibility that Bret Hart was in on the event, while other wrestlers such as Raven claim that there's no way Bret Hart knew what was going down that night. So was the whole thing a work? I don't know, but either way, it worked out in McMahon's favor as he would go on to become the biggest villain wrestling had seen in years, while Hart would struggle to find the same success in WCW that he had in the WWF. While he may be huge and completely insane, Psycho Sid was definitely not the sharpest knife in the drawer. But you know and I know that you are only half the man that I am! And I have half the brain that you do! But the man seemed to be a magnet for rumors. At one point, a story surfaced that Sid put a squirrel in his pants as part of a dare. Needless to say, it didn't end well with the squirrel taking a bite into one of Sid's testicles, leading to a trip to the hospital. But the biggest Sid urban legend revolves around his match with The Undertaker at WrestleMania 13. Rumor has it that while Taker picked up Sid for the tombstone, he lost control of his bowels resulting in himself crapping his tights. He even left the ring rather quickly, adding even more suspicion about the incident. Some stories even claim this incident took place at a house show leading up to WrestleMania. It's hard to tell if this actually occurred or not, or when it did, but it's rather funny that Sid seems to end up in the craziest urban legends. The Macho Man Randy Savage was a huge star in the WWF, and managed to maintain the same level of success in WCW. So when Vince McMahon purchased WCW in 2001, and wrestlers from the promotion started to enter the WWF, it was a little surprising that we never saw a return of the Macho Man. It was during this time that Vince McMahon reportedly said he would never do business with Savage again and he was never acknowledged by the company. Rumors started to spread about the possibility of Randy having some sort of sexual relationship with Stephanie McMahon back in 1994 when she was only 17, with Vince finding out about the situation after Savage left the WWF. These rumors could have surfaced after a video of Macho Man insulting Triple H was released in 2002, where Savage mentions taking Stephanie around the block. Certain wrestlers like Scott Hall have gone on record stating that they don't believe this urban legend to be true, while others that have worked for the WWF believe it very well could have happened. The hardcore title wasn't around for a very long time, being retired after only four years. The belt itself resembled a smashed and taped up version of the old WWF Winged Eagle Championship from the 80s and early 90s. 
Rumors started to spread that this belt was the same one that Mr. Perfect smashed during an interview after stealing the title from then WWF Champion Hulk Hogan. Some say that the hardcore title was not made from the actual belt that Perfect smashed, but instead a replica that was made for the same storyline due to the fact that Perfect destroyed the original to the point they could not use it for the rest of the feud. In the late 80s and early 90s, the Ultimate Warrior took the WWF by storm. Before long, the Warrior was main eventing WrestleMania and was one of the company's biggest stars. In 1991, the Ultimate Warrior and the WWF entered into a heated contract dispute with Warrior demanding more money, claiming he was more important to the company than even the likes of Hulk Hogan. Vince McMahon agreed to Warrior's terms to ensure that the wrestler participated in the upcoming pay-per-view, SummerSlam. After the event, the WWF suspended Warrior for his threats to sit out the pay-per-view unless his terms were met, at which point the Warrior simply left the company. In 1992, with the upcoming departure of Hulk Hogan, Vince McMahon decided to contact the Ultimate Warrior to return to the WWF, and at WrestleMania 8, that's exactly what he did. But fans were suspicious of this Warrior return, claiming that it wasn't the same guy behind the face paint, noting that his physique had changed, his hair was different, and that it just didn't seem like the same Warrior. Fans started conspiracy theories that the original Warrior had died, and the WWF simply found another guy that looked similar, slapped some face paint on him, and sent him through the curtain. By the end of 1992, the Warrior and the WWF parted ways for the second time. Most people these days don't buy this urban legend, but there are still those out there that truly believe there were two Ultimate Warriors. What are some other urban legends you've heard of? Let me know in the comments section below, and as always, thanks for watching.